Fatality chat. It's not game over yet for those turtles. They're coming for the shredder chat. Stay with me now. Stay with me. Arigato. It's appropriate too because we're speaking Japanese and you know the, the ninjas are from Japan, right? No, that's China. Are they from Japan? Where are ninjas from? I don't know, chat. Welcome to the stream. Explain it to me. But now I think before this this movie come out, you had the original uh, uh, animated series, uh, which is an adaptation of the 80s black and white comic which is again other than the some of the shows and this movie now that was the thing i was most familiar with that was a parody of daredevil chat where you had like the cheese beating turtles that are representative of, like daredevil themselves uh they, they were exposed to radioactive waste much in the same way that daredevil was exposed to radioactive waste they blinded him fucking mutated them they had a master named splinter and he was basically a uh anthropomorphic rat version of daredevil's master stick uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they had the Foot Clan as their ultimate enemy. Daredevil, he had the hand. Uh, so it's, like, it's kind of cool, and they, it kind of goes hand in hand. It was the, I, I, and again, this is not like canon or whatever at this point. It doesn't even matter. Comic, comic canon is nonsense to begin with. But apparently the same exact ooze that Blind Daredevil leaked down into the sewer, and that's what, you know, <laughs> caused the mutation for the turtles that were exposed to it. It's goofy, but I was like, oh, I mean, hey, people that want to, you know, believe that, the, I mean, why not? Ninja Turtles are part of the uh, the Marvel universe. Sure, who cares? I think I think that works. <laughs> All the goofy shit that happens in the comics, uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, so that was what I was most familiar with at the time. And again, I just kind of skipped all the rest of the stuff. But you know, having seen this, guys, and I'll tell you right now. Uh, you know, I don't. I, you know, people are like, because you know, I typically review a lot of bad movies on my stream. This isn't a bad film. I, I could see this has a lot of charm to it. It has a lot of uh, stuff that I'm actually impressed by on a technical level. Like, I'll tell you right now, the people in those suits, like, yeah, the, the fucking voice doesn't match up to the mouths exactly. It's a little out of sync, but it's not egregious or anything. And the way that they have these guys inside these bodysuits and they're able to perform all these action scenes, very impressive. I was like, wow, that's like, they're moving very fast. They had to keep these things light. But I was like, I was very surprised at just how nimble all the fight scenes were. And it wasn't heavy or awkward or anything like that. Like, I, honestly, chat, because again, I saw the third one years ago. God, maybe nearly 20 years ago at this point. I'm so old. Um, but with this film, I was expecting something more akin to like Burton's Batman, the way Michael Keaton fights in the suit, which is super awkward and stilted and he can't turn his body. But it was the complete opposite of that. Again, the people in these suits did a very good job, in my opinion. Also, uh, for this time chat, I was just looking up some facts on Wikipedia. This was the most successful uh it was excuse me it was the highest gross and most successful highest grossing independent film of its time until apparently the blair witch project which came out in 99 uh this was uh produced not with the major studio it was eventually sold to new line cinema who distributed the film but it was produced solely by uh like a couple of people i believe you know, for a budget of 13.5 million made a profit of 201 million so this was a huge success at the time that's where they greenlight all those sequels. Yeah, obviously they had all the animated shows and the merchandise. So this was a huge property. It still is to this day. I mean, they're still trying to make it work with those new movies. So I have a lot of respect for the film in that regard. Now there's some other stuff that I'm like, eh, this is not really working for me. But again, kind of how I look towards Power Rangers. I'm like, yes, this would definitely not work for most people. 
I have appreciation for it to a degree. I know it's fucking goofy in some cases bad, but it's like, I understand that. I understand what the passion is for that. Summer baby, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Mm. Oh, Mr. Yaz, man. I'm glad you brought that up. But yes, I, there is a, guys, because we have the Foot Clan in this movie. There's a hierarchy of villains in this film. You got the Master Shredder. The guy with the kind of Darth Vader-esque mask, chat, all encased in metal and has blades on his arms. You got the bald Japanese guy. He's the second in command. But there is a third person in command. And Mr. Yasmin, you got it correctly because everyone defers to that guy after fucking Shredder and the bald guy get killed. He's like, he, this guy, this actor, is now the leader of the Foot Clan. I assume he takes on the role of Shredder in the sequel. Because fuck, this fucking Shredder ain't coming back. Or I'm going to tell you right now, what they did to him, I'm like, Jesus, that's fucking dark. But we're not there yet, Chet. We're not there yet. Actually, where we are, this is 1999 New York City, Chat. There's a fucking crime wave going on. It's being reported by ace reporter April O'Neil, who I'm going to say, Chat, is extremely attractive in this movie. I don't know what it is uh, about her, but there's just... I don't know. It's like, it's like wow. I can, I can see... Where, because think about Power Rangers chat, like for a lot of kids my age at that time, like Kimberly was their first like TV crush. First they're like, oh my God, Kimberly, she's so hot. And I imagine people who are obsessed with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they look at Oprah O'Neill, it's like, oh, April O'Neill, she's so hot. It's the same exact way. There was just something weird about it. It was just like, you are very attractive. I don't know, just because uh, she's intelligent. She looks good. She's got a nice butt chat. I'm not going to lie. She's got a nice booty. Uh, and I don't know, there's just, she's, she's got moxie. There's something about her. Is the, it's the jump, is that, is that what is it? Just the jumpsuit? I mean, she looked good in everything she wore. I don't know, just like, huh. <laughs> it's, it's something about her. <laughs> Where'd you get 1999? Oh, it's 19, no, it's 1990. Did I, did I write the wrong, uh, wrong year in there? No, I put 1990, but it's the year 1990, chat. There's a crime wave happening across New York City. This is pre Giuliani, New York. Before he started cracking down the mob and the youth chap. Uh, April O'Neil, she's reporting all this crime. Oh! Dave Pancake, welcome to the street. Thank you for the four biddies. Cheer juicy. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Mr. Revenier, goddammit. Remember people in Russia having a call about gadget uh, for, uh, from Rescue Rangers? I heard about that too. But we're not talking about Rescue Rangers right now. We'll talk about that later. She was hot. Let's just, be, let's just admit it, chap. She was hot. April O'Neil's hot. I, under I get it now. I understand. She's looking good in this movie. Everybody's hitting on her, whether you're an anthropomorphic turtle or you're a smelly, sports-obsessed vigilante. Everyone loves April O'Neil, and I do too, and so do you. But she's reporting on this crime wave in New York City chat. Uh, we, we see this montage of footage of these goddamn young sons of bitches stealing jewels and electronics and everything else out from everyone uh, who is just trying to do a day's work. Blue collar workers, chat, just trying to make a delivery, and these near do wells, they're taking everything. These rap scallions, if you will, these street urchins, chat. I don't know why I'm using British slang for this, <laughs> like the, 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 you know, that type of thing. That's what they were doing. They're stealing from all these people. See this montage of stuff. April O'Neil's the only one's talking about. She's criticizing the uh, police department. And, like, they're in action on this. We don't know why there's such inaction, chat. But then we do see it because it's a whole vast conspiracy. These kids, they're working for the Shredder, for the Foot Clan, who's, who's maintained a foothold, get it? In New York City, chat. And for whatever reason, they're collecting as many of these uh, uh, electronics as possible. I guess just to attain wealth. You know, I thought there would be like a more of a grand plan throughout the movie that like reveals, oh, there's a reason why they're specifically going for electronics and metal. Not really. They're just doing, I guess, to get money, maybe to forge weapons. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yes, we uh, we do cut to the foot, uh, the foot's lair chat, and it's basically, you know, a 90s arcade. <laughs> it honestly reminded me of, you know, the, the scene in Pinocchio, I forget what it's called, but Paradise Island or Vice Island? Where all the kids go and they all smoke and drink and everything and do fucking cocaine off each other's asses and everything like that. That's like this version, except not as not as scary. There's like arcade machines everywhere. Everyone's skateboarding. Everyone's gambling and smoking big old cigars. And it's just to inebriate these kids, to indoctrinate these kids into the foot into the Foot Clan. And you got then you got these guys that are walking around making sure all these kids are are doing evil. Chat and Shredder's just observing. He's like, yes, good. And he's told by his lieutenant, like, all right, we're, we're ready to move up our operations. But, you know, Shredder's like, no, 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 no. I'm watching this news report, and this girl, she's a little uppity. 
take care of her. So I was like, oh shit, Chuck. April O'Neil now has a fucking uh, mark behind her head. Because she's the only one talking about this crime with no one else is doing. Again, pre Giuliano New York chat. There's a lot of bad stuff happening during this time. <laughs> Oh, Chris Harris, I will get to that. I am saving it. You spoil Okay, fine. Goddamn Sam Rockwell is in this movie, Chad. He is the third most important figure in the Foot Clan. When Shredder and the bald Japanese guy die in this film, Chad, he's the one in charge. He's the one they all look to. I assume he becomes the Shredder in the sequel. Wendell, welcome to stream. Zodiac, welcome to stream. Hope you guys are doing well. I don't know what that is, Zodiac. But Sam Rockwell, I assume he's in Secret of the Use, right? Am I right? I probably am. And that's where we are, Chad. You got these street urchins, these Dickensian street urchins, Chad. Dickensian, that was the word I was looking for. Uh, they're just stealing everything they can. April O'Neil, she does report, but she doesn't know that she's got a fucking red axe in the back of her head. She knows that she's going to be assassinated. She doesn't know she's going to be assassinated by the Foot Clan yet. And so she leaves the office. She's done a good job, Chad. She goes ahead, she's walking back to her, uh, her, her car, which is just this weird kind of like buggy uh, Winnebago type thing. Just hideous. Now, I'm surprised this thing can even fucking drive. But, you know, that, that's her car. She has some, it has some sentimental value to her, I assume. Or she's not earning shit at the new station she works for. So she's going to the car chat. And, you know, the, all the lights are flickering again, pre Giuliano, New York. They didn't pay their electricity bills. And she sees all these fucking street urchins just tearing apart her car like gremlins. Trying to get as much metal or anything of value that they possibly can. She sees these kids. She kind of just like, ah, she kind of freaks out. Oh, yeah, earlier chat, she sees a rat in the ground. And she goes, oh, she gets freaked out by rats. Until she sees the fucking five foot one in the sewer. And so these kids, you know, they're tearing apart her car. She tries to hightail out of their chat, but then they, they go after guy uh, coming up from the sidewalk. He runs right in her chat. They're fighting for a person, and she's screaming. They're, they're trying. They're, 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 even before Shredder gives them the, the word to start killing her chat, she might die here. Then all of a sudden, we see the fucking manhole cover just pop open, and we see what we... Uh, we don't know it yet, but it's one of the turtles, Chad. It might be Raphael. He's looking over there, and he sees these kids, and all of a sudden, you see a ninja star come out of nowhere and takes out all the lights, chat. And then... You hear the, some the people going bopping and booping and busting, and then the lights do come back on somehow. I don't know. And it is revealed that these street urchins are dead. They've been horrifically murdered by these anthropomorphic turtles. Chat just fucking guts strewn out and just, you know, barely. I mean, some of them are like fucked up and paralyzed, but most of them are dead. Nah, Chad, they, get, they got tied up. They're fine. Just got a little bust in the jaw and things like that, but they're okay. The fucking uh, New York City police, they come by, come by NYPD. I guess they were alerted somehow, maybe by the turtles themselves. They go to check on. Uh, April Nero, ma'am, are you okay? She just doesn't know what the hell happened, chat. But she sees to her immediate left a, a, a ninja side, chat. One of Raphael's ninja side. We don't know it's Raphael yet, but we, we, you know, you know who it is. She sees it. She pockets the chat. She puts it in her purse. Like I don't know what the fuck this is. I'm taking it with me. Raphael again, looking at the out of the manhole cover. He goes, ah, damn it! By the way, chat. This is back in the day when PG-13 movies when they used the word damn it and shit and threw it around all the time. I was kind of shocked by how much, uh, how many times the, uh, the the turtles were swearing the stones. Like, oh wow, you don't really see that in the in the. Not funny enough, what the Michael Bay produced movies? At least I can't remember. Uh, Fern, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, they're swearing up a goddamn storm again. Like, hey, they're teenagers. They're gonna be potty mouths, right, chap? So they go back in the sewers, chat, and they're just fucking hyped about. They just had their first battle of their lives. They killed a couple of kids. They're all about it. They're sure Master Splinter is going to be proud of them. You got Donatello. You got Michelangelo. You got Leonardo. They're, they're just jazz. But fucking Raphael, always the hothead. He should have upset because he lost his size. So they eventually go back to the little, um, the little abode, which is underneath the sewers of New York, which I imagine is a fucking nightmare. Filled with diseases. I hope, I, I guess they're, you know, immune to certain things. They are turtles. Uh, I would hope they have fucking tetanus. They do live with a giant rat man. It's probably filled with parasites. So they're probably used to it at this point. Uh, but they go back to, to their home chat. They return to Splinter, who's actually, you know, he, he, they regale him with their tail. He's proud of them. But fucking Raphael, he can't contain himself. He's like, ah, I lost his side, master. Oh, all of them have different accents, by the way. And they're all doing their, their various catchphrases. And this is a part of the movie where it's like, uh, the dialogue of the turtles to me is just not great. Uh, I could see where people would be kind of charmed by because I get it. it's it's much like the cartoon when they're saying radical and uh, you know awesome and tubular. Not Kawabanga though, Chad. That comes at the end of the movie. That's a big special one, and you you, you wouldn't expect who says it. Not Michelangelo, someone else. 
Uh, but it, the dialogue between the turtles, I just like, ah, eh, this doesn't work for me. When they're with April O'Neil, or later in the film, Casey Jones, I think it's a lot better. Uh, but I could see where it does have some charm for people who love the cartoon. So I'm not going to hold it against it. Not going to hold it against it. I'm fine. Fern, I'm angry. Why are you angry, Fern? I'm not talking shit about the movie. I'm being nice. I'm being very nice. Yeah, the Bay movies have almost no cussing. It's weird. I, this is, I'll tell you right now, it's much better than the, than the Michael Bay films. No question about that. No question about that. Hmm. Devin, let it go. I can get back. What am I letting go? Wendell, my internet is so bad right now. I think I'm about to leave. Thanks for the stream. Sorry, I could say. No, it's no problem, Wendell. It's no issue. I'm sorry that your internet's not working. No apologies necessary. Be sure to check out the VOD later. Uh, so where are we at? Okay. Yeah, so Raphael, he tells uh, Master Splinter that uh, he uh, lost his size. Like, listen, don't worry about it. All right? You lost it. You can't go up there. You can't expose yourself to the humans. They can't know you exist because that'll bring untold misfortune upon us. And Raphael's like, he's still frustrated, chat. The other turtles are like, ah, we're just, hey, we're, they're so psyched. And they took on these uh, fucking kids and murdered all them, and murdered them all. Uh, so they decide to get pizza, just like in the cartoons. So you got Michelangelo using a classic New York payphone chat. Makes, you know, a funny call. You know, fucking pineapple and ham and olives, pepperoni, extra cheese, stuffed crust, but no anchovies. I'm going to be that guy, chap. I love anchovies on pizza. I love that. Oh, that salty fish. It's so goddamn good. Red Badger, welcome to the stream. How you doing? I'm talking about my love and anchovies on pizza. I'm sorry. You ever had to go to a payphone? Back in the day, yeah. That's how old I am. I remember using a payphone. Yeah, back when, oh, Jesus, like in the early 2000s, late 90s, going to like the mall or arcades, chat. That's how old I am. Hell yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Damker's been growing, growing. I missed a lot of streams. My bad. No problem, true problem. True. It's been a while, man. No, I'm happy to have you here. How have you been? I'm just talking about Ninja Turtles. And so they're in the pizza chat, and fucking Splinter says, get over here, Michael, or My Michelangelo, we gotta talk, and he's, again, he's giving some wise, sage advice to, to, the, to his sons. I do like this about him, chat. Like, again, I don't remember uh, uh, Splinter's, Master Splinter's dialogue. Again, a lot of wise, you know, uh, advice, kind of fortune cookie shit, but we'll, you know, we'll let him give, we'll, we'll let him give a chat, it's fine, it worked for me. But, I do like the fact that they frequently acknowledge that Splinter is their adopted father. Uh, and he refers to like the the turtles as his sons. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I, that, 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 again, that's a nice. Uh, a, it, it endears you towards these characters, engenders you towards them. It's a nice charm, and I kind of like this. It's a wholesome relationship. And even though they're kind of a little immature, they they definitely respect their father. I was like, oh, this is really nice. I dug that. Um, but Raphael, again, he doesn't want to listen. Chat. He's he's angry. He's like, ah, I want to get out of here. And he's like, okay, we'll see. I just thought he was going to, like, walk down the sewer, go to another portion of the, you know, the New York uh, 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 sewer system. No, chat. And I didn't know, I guess it's a part of the cartoon, because I was reading up, and I was like, what the fuck is this? He proceeds to get a trench coat and a fucking fedora and just walks out of the sewer. <laughs> and among the dozens of the, the, the citizens, the dozens of New York City, and no one is any of the wiser that <laughs> there is a five-foot... Five foot five, maybe six foot turtle just walking around. Does anyone think that's weird and nobody bats an eye? I'm like, again, I'm like, listen, I'm giving this movie a lot of leeway, okay? At this point, I'm like, come on. <laughs> I thought that was a little goddamn I guess the, I imagine that's from the uh, from the cartoon. Because um, I don't even remember that from the black and white comic. Again, it's a little ridiculous, but okay, whatever. So he goes to fucking see a movie chat. Uh, the turtles, they order their pizza, the little comedic thing where the pizza delivery guys to put it through the grate. He gives them the the, the ten dollars. Says, well, but you owe me th thirteen fifty. Hey man, you were uh, three minutes late. So that means three uh, dollars off or whatever the fuck it is. And now, ha ha. So they eat the pizza again. Well, a lot of psych gags here where they cut up the pizza with their swords. Fucking lands in the plates and hits Master Splinter in the head. It's like I get it, I get it. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty chat because then we see Raphael. He's just walking out of the film chat. Just saw Critters, which I imagine c came out. The, the year before, maybe during the same year. He's not impressed with the chat. He was pretty disappointed. He's like, that was fucking bullshit. And he says so. And he just starts walking. <laughs> Again, fucking lights everywhere, illuminating him. Anyone could spot that this fucking thing is not human. But nobody cares. Again, pre Giuliani New York chat. They're like, we're not going to say anything to him. Let's just go home. And because we are terrified to be out at night. <laughs> when, once it's past 7 p.m. In, in New York City, got to get the fuck home. You're going to get mugged or robbed or beaten. Had those goddamn street urchins murdered. We don't know what happened to them. It's unknown. But he's just walking, chap. Uh, uh, oh, and, um, you know, while he's walking by, he sees, again, 
this other girl getting mugged someone or no someone stole this old woman's purse and they're running off of a chat he's pissed off about it and like he uses his ninja scope maybe his sign he trips him up and then he throws the purse back to the old woman the old woman's like yeah and they're, they're happy again not knowing he's a turtle um but then like one of the guys he tripped up he goes ahead and like runs into the bushes i believe and he's got like a friend with him they're trying to get away and then all of a sudden chat they are come upon by a man in a hockey mask and he just takes him out of a goddamn goalie stick get like right behind the knees chat so he cut him down quick and just proceeds to beat on him until he's interrupted by Raphael, who is now now not even revealed himself yet like even the guy <laughs> who can clearly see that's a giant fucking turtle no idea he interrupts him the guy says, I'm a vigilante. I am the Casey Jones. Again, very thick Brooklyn accent. Uh, uh, and I like this character a lot. He's fucking goofy as all hell. But I like the fact he's like a little out there, a little psychotic. Uh, he kind of reminds me of the DC villain Sportsmaster. Where like all of his weapons are based in like sports. So he has a hockey stick. He has like uh, baseball bats. Um, he has a fucking cricket bat. And you know, eventually him and Raphael, they get into a scrap. Because Casey Jones is like, I'm going to fuck up these guys. right? I'm going to murder them okay because the teenage teachers i go i i joke chat they're not killing anybody they didn't kill the street urchins from before they, they just tied him up and they waited for the police to get them you know that but the case jones he clearly he's a little psychotic he's gonna beat them either to death or to the point where they're paralyzed and raphael's like we're not gonna do that again the hot-headed one the turtles they get into a scrap chat uh you know they're evenly matched for the most part again raphael he is revealed to be a giant ethmorphic turtle that kind of like freaks casey jones up. he's not he's not just kind of freaks him out he's like oh my god that's weird and then Raphael beats the shit on him knocks him out he uh hightails it back to the uh uh to the sewer now I believe during this what happens after this uh let's see here um uh, oh yeah okay so, so he's gonna hide it uh hightail back to the um to the to the ninja turtle uh, base of operation on the sewer uh, chat meanwhile we catch up with april o'neill some of these scenes are like out of order but you get where i'm going um she talks to her boss about uh her being mugged last night almost being mugged and how she found this ninja science like this is crazy this something's going on there's more to this you know people of new york i've been to the uh to chinatown or i've talked to, to a lot of japanese americans and they believe that this has some these crimes are very similar to crimes from hundreds of years ago uh, by the foot clan she's just laying out all the exposition chan the boss is like that's nonsense i don't believe you we'll go talk to the, ch the chief of police meanwhile well it's revealed that her boss's son was a danny he's a little shit he's a little street urchin shit too chat very dickensian where he's just taking as much money electronics he can steals from april o'neill oh that danny I wanted to punch him in the face just for doing that so he knows like okay so he's on the inside chat he works for the fucking uh, shredder in the foot clan and so April O'Neil, she goes ahead, she talks to the chief of police, does a little, like a, a brief interview with him, talking a lot of shit, say, you're not doing nothing. Goes in her, uh, and it was off. He's like, what the hell are you doing? We're trying to protect the city. But she's like, no, you're not. You're covering for somebody. And, you know, he's, he screams at her. She leaves the office chat. And I think he uh, he eventually calls someone like, April O'Neil, she's starting to cause trouble. And then we cut to, like, another report of her showing the interview with uh, uh, the chief of police. And that was like, okay, we got to kill this bitch <laughs> as soon as possible. It's becoming an issue. Send my best troops, which are basically just teenagers in like these really shitty ninja masks. But they go out, they try to kill her in the subway. They try to take her out in a really kind of fucked up way because initially they come here and uh, they, 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 they come upon her and you know they're kind of surrounded and everything they're like we have a gift for you and he like holds out his hand like this she's like what there's nothing in it she's just fucking they just slap her in the face i was like that was kind of funny but that was fucked up too don't do that don't hit women and so again Raphael, meanwhile he he, he comes upon them too he beats the shove and chat uh, april because she got slapped in the goddamn face she's knocked out he picks up april neil and then they go uh towards the the ninja turtles hq but chat some of the guys uh, that he just beat up some of the foot soldiers they've come to and they're tracking him at least one guy's tracking Raphael into the sewer system he's like oh no it's the last thing that he needs right now he's got a tail so he's bringing her there chap he, he finally returns uh put laser on the couch she's still knocked out and turns like whoa it's the the hot reporter lady so little about Mr. Spoon's like this could bite us in the ass this probably isn't a good thing other uh, pimps <laughs> well it wasn't a backhand man it was a, it was a the, the forehand in that case but uh, so Master Splinter's like, he's a little freaked out by it. You know, they're like, oh, we got to go help her. Bring uh, cold water. Or, no, well, Master Splinter said, bring cold water for her and I'll, I'll watch over her. She fucking comes to chat. Again, 
much in the same way she freaked out when she saw the little rat early she sees the big rat the five foot rat monstrosity before she freaks out the turtles come in and then she gets acclimated for the most point chat because you know the turtles in their way are very charming she starts to befriend them you know they're very nice to her they offer her pizza it's like okay we're getting through all the bullshit of just her kind of freaking out that there's five foot rats and turtles here we just gotta we gotta get to the story we gotta get to that nice dynamic and i'll say i'll tell you this right now chat the dynamic between uh april and neil and the turtles and, and splinter is very good i don't know what it is i think it's honestly i think it is the actress who plays april o'neill what's her name uh judith hogue judith hogue i think she does a great job to me she's the best character in this film there's just something irresistibly charming about her and she manages to sell something that's so incredibly goofy just through that through that charm and what, what, she, what she's given you know again she's not doesn't just have the best dialogue in the world but she's manages to sell it nonetheless and she's got that kind of sarcastic attitude again kind of like a lois lane but not as a cold i'd say so I, I was a big fan of her character throughout the film and so she gets very acclimated she's like you know what guys thank you so much for helping me i appreciate it. this this is crazy she learns about the foot clan from uh, uh splinter i think at one point splinter what, what does he do we don't know yet oh no i think he briefly talks about like his old master and how he was a pet rat and oh yeah because he, he does the origin story so we find it because he's tell, he's explaining april o'neill how he came how he and the turtles came to be he's like yeah i was just an ordinary rat came over to america from japan with my master uh and, and his wife they died and so i was out on my own and i was in the sewer just scavenging just trying to survive and i came upon these four baby turtles and they were just you know uh, bathing in this 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 toxic waste and I grabbed them, and I got the toxic waste on me. I put them in little boxes. I got to take care of them. Again, very smart rat this time. And then he said, like, the next day, I just recalled being even more intelligent. And the turtles, they were growing very fast. And they, too, were becoming more intelligent. And I decided to train them in the ways of my master, Master Yoshi. And here we are before you. Five-foot-tall fucking mutants in the New York City sewer system. And we d decided to defend the lives of the New York citizens uh because we like all the uh things that typically come up in new york pizza entertainment you know that kind of thing so they're all happy about it. april neil's like i believe it. this this sounds great hey why don't you come back to my apartment and so i could properly thank you i can give you some food i can show you around they're all about it they're charm again they're charmed by april neil chat they think she's very attractive again they're teenagers raphael's got a little crush on her it's like oh it's very cute so he says oh you go kids i'm i'm too old to go out there i'm just gonna hold down the fort here so they go ahead they follow April O'Neil back to her apartment. Shenanigans ensue. Uh, catchphrases back and forth. Uh, 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 a nice rapport between all the characters. Um, after all that stuff, they say, okay, let's... Oh, what, what happens here? No, no, okay. So they was like, okay, let's go ahead. Let's go back to the uh, to the headquarters, to the sewer system. They go back there, chat, and it's just been fucking obliterated. It's disheveled. Things have been thrown around. There's, there was a battle of some kind, chat, and Master Splinter is missing. That fucking Foot Clansman who was fo uh, following Raphael, he knew what was going on. He saw that these giant turtles existed, hightailed it back to the Shredder and the Japanese bald man, Sam Rockwell, and told him everything he saw. Like, well, that's a big issue. Fucking kill them. So we don't want any threats to, to um, uh, um, ruin our plans. What's the plan, chat? I don't know. I thought they were going to have a big reveal in the movie, but apparently it's just stealing electronics and jewels. The Foot Clan, is, they're just fucking thieves. Unless I'm missing something. It could be that. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, they know they're going to hit it when they get to the apartment. Oh, no! <laughs> I'll say that, Retronimus. Again, a lot of the practical effects in this movie hold up. The suits, they, they look good. Again, not the the the, uh, the mouths and the, and the audio match up, but the way they move in these scenes... It feels very realistic. At least as realistic as possible. I like that they went with the practical suits. I think it works. I think as the movies go along, they, they, it gets worse for some reason. But they nailed it here. And so they're freaked out. They go back to April O'Neil. They tell them that someone attacked uh, 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 their their headquarters. Master Splinter, he's been kidnapped. Ratnapped, Chad. He's been ratnapped. April O'Neil's like, okay, well, you boys stay here. We'll try to figure this out together. We're going to get to the bottom of this fucking thing. Um, what happens here? Do, 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 do. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, da, da. Where's this? Okay, now we know. Now we know. So uh, uh, then, after after she gets like the the teenage mutant Ninja turtles uh, settled in her apartment, chat. She's visited by her boss. Her boss is very upset because she's messing with powers that she just does not understand. He knows about the foot, or maybe not doesn't know about the foot, but he knows that there is a powerful criminal organization afoot in New York City. 
The police chief is very upset. He brings his fucking delinquent son, Danny, who's look, working for the Foot Clan side with him. Uh, you know, she's trying to you know, just get her boss out of there. But Danny, he notices that the turtles are there. He knows something's going on. And so Danny, he goes right ahead and reports back to Master Shredder, who's doing a ceremony. Again, ingratiating these uh, dumb white kids in the Japanese culture. They don't know what the fuck they're doing, but that's what he's doing. He needs the fucking foot soldiers to take over New York City. He does that. Danny says, I ain't know where these turtles are. And this rat man is. He's like, I like that kid. Let's go to April O'Neil's apartment and kill her and burn down the entire place. And also the turtles. Uh, also, it's revealed, chat that fucking Master Splinter, he's there at the... Um, honestly, it reminds me, like, their headquarters is, like, the community center. <laughs> like, in any, like, 80s or 90s. Uh, uh, film. Everyone's, we gotta save the rec center. It's basically the day <laughs> Master Shredder and the Foot Clan operate a rec center, champ. And that shit's staying open with all the money they're making. They're bringing into that thing. So it's pretty good. And so, uh, Master Shredder's there. They're trying to interrogate him. He won't reveal anything to him. That one won't reveal the vacation of the turtles, like how he came to be. He's like, I'm not telling you shit, Shredder. Danny, he's getting a little flummoxed because he feels uncomfortable about the whole situation. He's like, he likes April O'Neil. She's always been kind to him. He doesn't want to see this rat man abuse. He feels kind of bad, chat, but he doesn't know what to do at this point. But we cut back to April O'Neil's apartment. Raphael, he's still very frustrated about the whole situation. Uh, he's just, again, he's got that anger he just can't control. He goes up to the roof, chat, and he's just like overlooking the horizon, practicing his uh, uh, ninja skills and everything. Meanwhile, Casey Jones, who's still licking his wounds from the other night, Getting beat up by Raphael. He's looking at a, a police scanner, Chad. He's looking for criminals to murder horrifically. But he's using his binoculars, checking things out. Spots fucking Raphael. And fucking, again, this is the middle of the goddamn day. Where anyone's on the roof in New York City. Or I look out a fucking window. You see a whole bunch of buildings, all the roofs. He's like, oh, it's a fucking turtle that beat the shit out of me. And he's like, I'm going to kill that fucking turtle. So he heads over there, Chad. Meanwhile, Raphael, just looking melancholy out into the, to the sunset, is come upon by the Foot Clan, Chad. Because they were sent there by Master Shredder. And they, he starts fighting everybody. As best as can, we get some, uh, we cut back to April O'Neil showing the turtles off into the shop underneath her apartment. Apparently it was owned by her dad, who was dead and or murdered, possibly on the foot claim, we don't know. And there again, all the goofy gags, chat, kind of scare each other, you know, being funny. It's like, okay, I get it. Um, they go back upstairs, they're like, where's Raphael? He comes fucking crashing through, uh, um, an, uh, what was it, um, what's the, like a window from above, skylight, Chad, comes crashing through a skylight, fucking lands on, uh, April O'Neil's floor, knock the fuck down, has a serious concussion, and then they're come upon by a whole bunch of foot soldiers, Chad, and then they got a good fight, and again, the fight sequences in these films are very, very fun, is turtle sperm green, I would assume so, I would assume so, I don't know, maybe, maybe because of the toxic waste they've been exposed to, I don't know, what, what color do you think their, 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 their semen is, Chad, let me know in the chat, hmm, Yes. Uh, <laughs> Turtle Club. But, not talking about the Master of Disguise right now. No, thank you. Anything but that film. And so the, all the Foot Clan, they start coming in there. And we get a really well choreographed action scene. Again, all the action in this movie, I mean, to, yeah, to a certain degree it's dated and it's a little goofy, but the way these guys move in these suits, they do a very good job. There's not a scene where I'm like, oh, pff, this is terrible. It's like, no. I, there's never a moment... In terms of the action scenes where I thought it was uh, poorly choreographed. It, it all it actually all really worked for me. I thought it was a lot of fun. So they're fighting, but they're turning the shit out of April O'Neil's apartment. The, the Foot Clan, they're bringing in fucking axes and everything. We see a whole, like, uh, nunchuck showdown between uh, Michelangelo and one of the other um, Foot Clan members. He's got a nunchuck, but, you know, Michelangelo's far more talented and beats the shit out of him, chat. They're all fighting. Eventually, because of just all the the, the damage to April O'Neil's apartment, it fucking folds in on itself. They come crashing down to the shop below, chat. With all the knickknacks and everything, antiques. They continue to fight. Fucking Casey Jones, he finally gets there, chat. He's fucking slow, apparently. He got injured. He had a sports career before he got really injured and messed up. He's in there, chat. He's helping the turtles. He's like, ah, well, these guys are clearly bad guys. And I don't like the fact that that guy beat the shit out of me. But I'm going to defend everyone. So he starts fighting when there's a big team up, chat. It's cool. It's good. It goes It goes well. Um, something Somehow the, the place catches fire, chat. And they're like, okay, we got to get the fuck out of here. Because this thing, everything is coming down. <laughs> April O'Neil's livelihood is burning before our eyes. We gotta get the hell out of here. Oh, Christian, welcome to stream and thank you for the host, good sir. How you doing tonight? Question for everyone: Do little kids have filters? Uh, I mean, uh, no. I mean, you gotta kind of um, uh, teach them to have filters. I mean, uh, little kids are known to be painfully honest uh, most of the time, except when they're lying, <laughs> trying to cover their little asses. But no, like morality and filters, that, those have to be taught. Absolutely. 
Yes. See those zero are welcome to Streamers Talking Ninja Turtles. How you doing? So uh, the turtles are like, okay, we gotta get the hell out of here. April Newman reveals there's like a back way to the the basement. They come out the other way and they just escape. Chat. Meanwhile, Casey Jones is like, I'll hold down the fort. They carry Raphael out. You know, Casey Jones, he's fighting everybody. The fucking Andrew machine from her fucking apartment upstairs comes down. And the boss is calling. He says, April O'Neil, I'm sorry about this, but you're fired. That report was one too many. The chief of police is upset, and so are other powers within the city itself. You don't know what's going on. I am calling you. I'm, I have a threat against my life. So Casey Jones here says, he's like, okay, I got to get the fuck out of here. He escapes too, chat. Fucking building comes down, crashes on the, the foot soldiers. They're burned alive, chat. They're screaming while the turtles, Casey Jones, April O'Neil, they're getting her little buggy, and they're driving off to another location. Who is that? Who's that hosting me? DMO, welcome to stream. How you doing? Thank you for the host. The hosts do mean a lot, guys. Helps out a lot. Spreads the word of the Revenites. And so Raphael, he's still knocked out. Uh, and they're like, we got to go to some safe, loca uh, some safe location. So they drive up to upstate New York where April O'Neil, she spent her childhood. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's a farm. But it's like, you know, it's like it's in the country, definitely. It's just this house. Like, the closest neighbor's like four miles away, chat. They get there. Um, like they're gonna try to take care of Raphael, April Neal, and Casey Jones. They're just bickering, chat. But you know, it's like they're starting to fall in love. You could tell, you know. Uh, they, you just, you just want these two to start fucking, okay? That's just the way it is. <laughs> so they get, they're bickering constantly, but they get charmed by each other. Uh, the turtles, they're taking care of Raphael. He eventually comes to chat. He recovers. They put him in like a fucking bathtub, just have him in water, I guess. But he comes to, and they're like, look, we gotta come up with a plan. Uh, Leonardo at one point, who was the leader of the turtles, by the way, the blue guy, um, he is somehow spiritually, uh, connected with, uh, Splinter, Master Splinter, and he's like, oh, I, I see you, Master Splinter, he's like, you, you, I, I must teach you one final lesson before you, you do what you need to do, and so, Leonardo convinces the other turtles, uh, to participate in this, basically this kind of ritual, and they're all sitting around a campfire again, you know, visual gags. I got the marshmallows, all that kind of shit. They do it. They're contacted by their master. And it's a very charming scene, Chad. He basically says, you know, he's like, hey, yeah, this is what you need to do. You just need to concentrate. You need to, uh, you got to do your best. He's giving a little, a little pep talk. And he says, "You will, I will love you and you will forever be my sons. And I was like, that is really nice. That is very charming. So, yay, the turtles feel reinvigorated. We cut back to April O'Neil and Casey Jones. Just been fucking going crazy in that house. Oh, goddamn day. It's, a, it's just, it's sexy, chat. So, they come back. They find them. And they're like, okay, we got to return to New York City. Uh, we Something is afoot. Ha! No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fun. Um, <laughs> Leonardo, Dante, Michelangelo, Raphael. That's true. That's true. They go fuck. They, they start fuck. They should start fucking then and there. True. God damn it. What's the way? That's, that's what they say. That's what they say in the movie. Uh, I don't think he's going to want her after he finds out what the turtles did. No! Oh, that's horrible. Don't say that. So they go back to New York, chat, because, you know, there's something afoot. And uh, we also uh, cut back to the fucking rec center where uh, uh, Shredder is, along with uh, the bald Japanese guy. Oh, yeah, the, the Shredder's upset that... Um, uh, that they failed to kill the turtles or April O'Neil, uh, and so he goes again to try to interrogate Master Shred or excuse me, Master Splinter. Master Splinter's not giving him nothing. He's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you uh, soon. Um, uh, oh, uh, what happens? Oh yeah, and so Master Splinter, I think, tells Daniel because Daniel he's he's starting to care chat. He goes to talk to Master Splinter. I think Master Splinter reveals here. Oh, E Mike, thank you so much for the thirty. What was that 30, 30 bitties. Chris, can you please tell Corey to read my email I sent to him before, and I was wondering if you can remind him about it. I can remind him. Send it to him again. Forward it to him again. I think that might be good. Uh, yeah, so Master Splinter, he reveals, like, his origin story, but, like, before he even met the Turtles, when he was raised by Master Yoshi. Because uh, he said, like, your headband, because all the, like, the recruits, the initiates, they wear a headband, and it has a specific mark. And Master Splinter says, I remember that mark. When my uh, master, when he was in Japan, he fell in love with this beautiful girl, who was promised to this cruel warrior, and she did not love him. And so they they came to America to, to find a new life, chat. But this evil man followed them. And once my master returned home from work, which apparently is a construction worker, sure, okay, you know, good job, obviously, uh, comes home, he found his beautiful bride murdered, and he was um, attacked 
by this evil man. He killed my master. And he had, had this same headband. I forget, he said he has a Japanese name. I don't know what it is. And the fucking rat apparently messed with it. Very intelligent for a rat. He broke out of his cage and then proceeded to gnaw on this evil man's face. And fucked him up good. So good that he's like, I'm going to kill that fucking rat. And he tried to kill him, Chad. He cut off his ear, but then the man escaped. And that's when Master Splinter went to the sewers and got exposed to toxic waste, etc., etc. Tells this to the kid. Daniel is like, you must go and uh, uh, find my sons and family and everything. He fucking, he jets, Chad. He goes back to the sewer when the fucking turtles and Casey Jones, April, they go to the sewer. That's where Daniel is. He's been hiding, Chad. Uh, apparently someone like drew a picture at one point of one of the turtles and they give it to Daniel. Maybe he drew it. I don't remember. But... He's like, oh, you're my family now. I, I feel so good. Casey Jones, he doesn't like to be in the sewer, so he goes back up, chat, stays in the truck. He, you know, he's, I guess he has uh, claustrophobia for whatever reason. So he's in the truck or whatever. Daniel, again, he's starting to feel antsy and crumpy. He wants to go check on Master Splinter. So he goes ahead and goes back to the headquarters. Fucking Casey Jones, he sees him, though. He's like, oh, I see where you're going, kid. I didn't trust you to begin with, and he's following him. We follow this kid. He goes back there. Uh, well, by, Daniel apparently has been gone for uh, days at this point. And Shredder's like, where the fuck is that little ginger kid? Where'd he go? I, I need him for something. And then he goes back to talk to Splinter. He's like, oh, the, your sons, the Ninja Turtles have returned for Tronimus. Thank you so much for the 200 biddies. I appreciate that. Mmm. Mmm, very good. So, um, where are we? Uh, oh, yeah. So he goes back there, fucking Shredder. He gets that. He's like, where the fuck you been? And then he finds the picture. He's I know you're hiding something, you lying little shit. He sees the chat. He's like, ah, they've returned. Because based on this drawing of Leonardo, they're obviously back. I don't know why he came to that conclusion, but he did. And so he's like, summon all my soldiers. We're going to attack, and I will join you to make sure the job is done. Ball Japanese man, you stay here, Sam Rockwell, and defend the rec center. And so they go off, chat. Uh, uh, meanwhile, Casey Jones... Uh, he's there. He gets Danny out. He's like, okay, we got to take, we got to rescue Master Splinter. Because this is the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles' father. So they go there, chat. They rescue Master Splinter. He's like, who the hell are you? And I'm Casey Jones. Get his old backstory. I'm thinking sports guy. Uh, they get him, chat. But then they are come upon by the bald Japanese man and Sam Rockwell. And they're none too happy. And so the, the bald Japanese man, he just starts beating the shit out of Casey Jones until he gets a specific sports-related thing. Happens to be a fucking driver for a golf club set. And he kills the Japanese man. <laughs> Hits him in the fucking uh, stomach. Of, you know, just, wah, fucking blood shoots out of his mouth. Hits him in the head, chat. Massive concussion. Internal damage. Dead. And now, chat, we are faced with Sam Rockwell. He is now, as we all know, the third person in charge of the Foot Clan. He says, um, this is a goddamn family. We're going to kill you. Casey Jones says, this is not a family. Making you steal stuff. Being abused by Jap bald Japanese men you do you, Sam Rockwell. And Sam Rockwell is like, shit, man, you are absolutely right. Let's come and help you save the day. And they fucking leave in a big old group chat. <laughs> You're gonna, we're going to make you review 10-inch Mutant Ninja Turtles. What the hell is that? What is that? I've never heard of that movie. And so they head out there, chat. Meanwhile, the fucking Foot Clan and Shredder, they attack the, the sewer, uh, the headquarters. And But the, the Turtles, they're, they're so well trained at this point. They handle the Foot Clan, no problem. Jeff beating the shit out of them. Action scene after action scene. April O'Neil, she's helping. She's bashing a couple guys in the head. Brains everywhere. They manage, manage to take the, to the, the fight uh, out to the streets of New York. Again, fighting all the, the Foot Clan's men. Go up to the roof, take care of the rest of them guys. But then the fucking, the Shredder reveals himself. And he's like, okay, I'm going to beat you up one by one. The Ninja Turtles just proceed to take him on one by one. It's like, this is not effective. <laughs> you should all get uh, gained up as a group to take him out. You probably could have. And so they go one at a time, chat. He takes him out, no problem. Uh, eventually, he uh, gets uh, Leonardo uh, under his spear. And he even says, it's like, if you idiots attack me all at once, you would have easily defeated me <laughs> it would have been no problem but for your arrogance i'll kill this turtle and he proceeds to almost kill him chap he's got the spear raised and everything uh meanwhile fucking casey jones and the uh kids show up chat and with sam sam rockwell they start fighting the other foot soldiers i think on the streets uh but then chat uh when while fucking uh shredder's about to stab leonardo uh, a thing comes out like oh 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 because he grabs michelangelo's um nunchucks because the turtles threw their weapons away thinking shredder would spare leonardo if they did so but uh uh swinner he throws the nunchucks hits the spear out of uh shredder's hand and splinter reveals that i know who you are shredder you are the one who killed my master years ago and shredder's like you're that fucking
fucking rat! Oh my god, you're hideous! And he proceeds to take off his uh, mask in a very Darth Vader, kind of a lame Darth Vader-esque way, and he shows off all the fucking rat bites on his face. I would be pissed off too, chat. And he's like, I'm gonna kill you, and he fucking charges at Master Splinter, chat, and Master Splinter just kind of steps to the side! <laughs> <laughs> and gra it grabs the end of the spear while fucking Shredder kind of falls off. And then Splinter just, start just starts talking shit. It's like, hey, man, everyone dies. But in your case, and the Splinter, you know, uh, Shredder tries to, like, stab him. He's like, man, he's like, ah! But then Shredder, like, uh, Splinter lets it go. But in your case, you die without honor. And he fucking falls, chat, into a fucking uh, garbage truck. And this is really dark and fucked up what happens here, too. Because Casey Jones is right there. So uh, uh, Matt Schroeder, he falls into a garbage truck. And then he just starts the, the, he pulls the switch and it starts compressing. And Shredder is just, uh, again, smushed. Turned to a fucking a cube. He gets crushed. And it's like, that is a, that is a bad way to go. <laughs> That's a painful way to go. Really just popping, exploding, feeling all that until you don't anymore. I mean, it's a badass move, but for like a kid's movie, I'm like, That's kind of dark. And so the Shredder is dead at this point. Casey Jones killed the uh, the bald Japanese man who was second in command. And so now that all that's left is Sam Rockwell and the fucking police show up. And Sam Rockwell's like, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I guess I'm kind of the leader of the Foot Clan now. Why don't you just go to the rec center where we're keeping all the stolen goods? And we're scot-free. And they just kill a fucking scot-free, chat. <laughs> This entire criminal organization just goes free. No wonder Sam Rockwell came back in the sequel to run amok yet, yet again. Uh, and then fucking Casey Jones. Uh, oh, oh yeah, April O'Neil. She gets her job back. She's probably looking hot as hell, chat. I'm sorry, but she absolutely is. Casey Jones comes over. They just, fart, just start smooching the entire time. The, the Ninja Turtles, they're purring up on the roof. Everyone's excited. Then, then, no one realizes they're up there, I guess. I don't know, maybe New York's cool with them. I'm not sure. They're happy about it. Master Splinter's happy about it. They start saying, you know, oh, awesome, radical, tubular. And then everyone's like, no, that's not, that's not good. That's not a good catchphrase. And fucking Master Splinter comes in like, I got one for you, boys. I've always been partial to Cowabunga. And they're like, oh, yay. Now they said the iconic line, Cowabunga, which is said by all the tur turtles, particularly Michelangelo. And that chat is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the classic 1990 film.